Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to The Disconnected. This episode that you're about to watch is a very sort of personal conversation between me and a longtime friend of mine named Jeremy Spring. Jeremy was a singer for a group called Abandoned Kansas, and uh, they have they've they've kind of hung it up at this point. Uh, he has gotten a couple of the guys that were involved in that group to form a, uh, a, a basically a cover band called A Band in Kansas. Hilarious. Uh, he's also got another project called Crusoe, but his big current project that he's working on is called Glass Age. They recently recorded a full length. I, I believe it's going to have 12 tracks on it. They're releasing it on vinyl, CD, digital, of course, and all of that here soon. And it, it is just sort of a journey between uh, the two of us talking about the stuff that we've seen over the last uh, you know, 10 or 12 years that we've known each other, uh, the way physical media affects my life, the way it affects his life, uh, the music industry as a whole, the, the things that we've seen growing, basically growing up together, and the way that music has evolved both of us. Uh, I hope that you enjoy this sort of thing. This was a, a very different take than what's usually on the channel. And uh, if you like it, let me know in the comments. I, I've got quite a few contacts that I can do stuff like this with. But yeah, uh, Jeremy's great. Uh, he is a hilarious person. I had to edit out of some technical glitches through this, but it's uh, it's worth it. It is a nice, solid watch. Uh, again, this is Jeremy Spring. Here we go. It's a nice Amy Winehouse piece. Oh, dang, and it's Bowie, too. I couldn't see Bowie before the light was on. <laughs> Bowie has scissor hands cutting Winehouse. <laughs> Quite the concept, bro. Here, I'll take you on the tour. We've got <laughs> giving you the thumbs up. That's a glorious bastard's, you know, Bear Jew and Brad Pitt, but he's holding a Facebook symbol. <laughs> uh, Daniel Day-Lewis. Awesome. Perfect. Somebody sent me that. <laughs> freaking awesome. And then he's got a series of these with like, like wow. where it's a normal thrift store painting, but he puts like yeah. characters in it. That's awesome. And then dude, look at the vinyl. We're, we're talking about vinyl. He did like, he does duct tape art. on. Wow. Vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite vinyl sitting up here, Hot Fuss. Yeah. Astro World. Well, you can't really talk about Travis Scott anymore, so sorry. <laughs> talk about physical media. Rough joke. No, so dude. how's everything been for you? I haven't even gotten that far yet. Man, I'm doing okay. You know, dad mode for sure. And then I, I run programming and booking and marketing for like six venues. Jeez. So I'm so very much up in the blood of music. I do worship at church. And then I still have some bands. So, man, I'm busy. I'm mostly, I feel like what I mostly do is schedule people. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I think. That makes like, sense. Uh, coordinating a lot of different teams and, you know, really exciting stuff. I mean, music's back, pandemic's over. Like, I've been at shows the last few weeks and just it feels alive again. And people are back with a vengeance and no, no, like, uh, 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 you know, it, it's a, uh, it feels great, man. I don't know if you've been to live stuff yet, but that's my. I, yeah, I just live uh, world. I think the well in December, my my wife got me tickets for Trans Siberian Orchestra. She had never seen them, yeah. so we went all out, went to the Wild big uh, the the uh, the Sprint Center, the old yeah, Sprint yeah. Center in Kansas City. And then uh, just three weeks ago, we got back into my stuff. We went and saw Coheed and Cambria, and with the used a, or what tour was it? What? No, it was uh, it was very small. It was them, and uh, let me pull up the name You're of the good. band. What spot was it at? Uh, the Uptown. I I never oh, been yeah. there, so it's a it was a nice cool. little venue. Yeah. Um, the other band, because I believe they deserve a little bit of props here, yeah, was uh Sheer Mag. Sheer Mag. Uh, female fronted, like, um, they they'd kind of go good with something like a Lion Eyes. If you've heard them, they they got kind of big for a few years. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they were they were good, just kind of like buzzy. Not not real punk, but just that that 
that uprising we've had in like post grunge rock. Yeah, noisy stuff. That, that yeah. Shit, yeah, they had a meet me at the altar opening before the used and then coheed on the show I saw uh, last year. And uh, nice. meet me at the altar is an all, all girl band. It's pretty dope. Coheed's yeah. playing a lot too. They're about to tour yeah. with uh, Dance Gavin Dance. And... That's a great matchup with the yep. just the drama of their shows. Like, oh yeah, the fans are all fantasy oriented. I feel like. It's, it's, <laughs> yep. It's uh, you know what I'm saying? It's like exactly, gamer yeah, gamer stuff or something. I don't know. It's not my thing, but I went and saw. I mean, they're incredible players. They're really nice guys. Yeah, I agree. My buddy from Iowa that I met, like when I met, you know, Tim Dodd. Yep. Familiar with the name Everyday Astronaut. Yep. Well, I met a, a buddy through him, and in Iowa, he was tour managing for Coheed. So just nice. like his name's Matt, and um, yeah, he he was able to hook up some tickets and have a good time, and it was it was cool. That's yeah, great. That's nice when some of the stuff that we you've know, we've known each other for a long time. Some of the stuff we put in equity into a long time ago. Like you've been hosting house shows for a long time. Yep. Some of the stuff starting to pay off in a cool way, uh, getting to expand the community and just um, some of the relationships are are sustaining and it's cool, man. I mean, even even like what we're doing, I think it's I think it's pretty dope. It's nice. I mean, it's I was trying to think about that earlier. The first time I actually shook your hand, I couldn't remember if it was like 2009, 10 or 11, somewhere around there. Okay. Before uh, your house. Yeah, it was long before the house because I think it was a little tiny house, not a house show, but like a little tiny show in the middle of nowhere in California. And then I, I can't remember if that was first or like, like what was your first tour through California? Do you remember? So I know we came through with the classic crime and House of Heroes once and played like v Victorville. Yep, that might have been the one. And that was where we pulled in a lot of new faces because the radio station, Air One down there, yep. sponsored it. And so it seemed like we reached the most new folks in that armpit. That's probably the one because I volunteered with Air One for two and a half years. There you go. I mean, I remember the specific argument me and Chet got into that night. Like, <laughs> so I don't, Chet was playing bass first at that time, not Nick. Did we have a different bassist? I don't yep. know. Maybe that was it. So, yeah, cool. That uh, that night, Matt was sick, and uh, it did not Dude, go he, well. He was, yeah, he was sick. <laughs> Uh, around that time that was right after this came out right yes dude that was that tour we uh we wanted to talk yeah, about physical happened. media and so i went and got uh i had to keep i i don't know if i've ever told you this i think i had three copies of each of these and these are my four sealed copies that i still have uh to keep in perfect shape and i, I don't have any of that <laughs> i have i've ruined at least one set of all four by playing them through too much guaranteed That's a great feeling dude we've always been a uh, uh, quality fans over quantity is what i like to do <laughs> you know folks well, that i feel like dove into our meat you get it i mean yeah, yeah. i don't have to defend that ak is dead but like that's the kind of art i like to make it counts i never can get it on a big enough platform for it to really matter but yeah anyway but the people that's it connects with it connects that. deep yeah i feel like it's 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 where we want to live is like like uh make it you know i want it to be nice to listen to on the first pass but i want that fourth and fifth pass pull in the driveway by yourself finish the song and you're like wait and then like you know something not because we're brilliant but like i want the art to feel <laughs> that layered you know what i'm saying right. like that like a painting like you see something different each time you pass back through it like that much detail and care it's funny when you hold up those records dude it i, I time traveled like it was awesome when did you build a wall come out? What was this? Oh seven, really? Yeah. December of oh seven. So really, we oh, toured seven. it oh eight. Jeez. But we made it in the summer of oh seven in Ohio, and a guy that in Wichita that owns a few restaurants and now his name's on the arena and, and stuff. Our bassist was at work. He's like a server at a steakhouse, and um, he just wrote a check for that. He was like, wow. "Good luck." On recording and wrote it like a ten or twelve thousand dollar check, and we drove to Ohio and made that record. That is awesome, <laughs> yeah, dude. And then that bassist that played on it when we got back, uh, he married our drummer's sister, and <laughs> we had to kick him out of the band, and we kicked his bass parts off the record too. So the bass <laughs> parts were just like an engineer that was in Ohio that just kind of plopped down what we thought we wanted, right? Maybe. So it's the way that dude, the way final products come together. I mean it. Yeah, that was very. Uh, we were new. We were we were working with some guys out of Columbus and just winging it. But yeah, that's when it started. I mean that because that came out in December, and then 2007, and then 2008, we dropped out of school and like hit the road full time. 
That's awesome. Played like 250 shows in 2008. It was insane. You guys always played a ton of shows, yeah. but really never made it out anywhere near me. So I think the first time I ever really got into You Build a Wall was because I, I, again, I don't think I've, we've ever talked about this, but I wrote for uh, IndieVisionMusic.com for a while. Yes, I did not know that. Who Brandon, who's over there? The, uh, the dude, I'm probably not going to remember any dude, of the names. Not, they, dude, they're still going, and yeah. they're still sweet about it, and they're passionate about music. Those guys rule. Like, shout out to IndieVision. That's, I didn't realize you wrote for them. That's cool. A little bit, yeah. I did a handful of reviews, and uh, that one came across and I just immediately was connected. And what pulled you into that? I mean, was it, we don't have to just focus on you build the wall, but did you get the record? Did you get the no. CD or you were iTunes? Well, I, Spotify wasn't there yet. No, I think it was literally just a, a link to, uh, you know what? I think it was pure volume. There was a link to pure yeah. volume. <laughs> pure volume mattered. Do, you know what it probably was, was MySpace. Maybe, maybe no. around then. Our uh, MySpace kicked ass, dude. We yeah. had like, 50,000 friends, millions of people, <laughs> very impressive. And then it switched to Facebook and we were useless, bro. Like it, it's crazy how much that stuff matters. Like it's sad. Well, well, I mean, it's a tool. MySpace ruled like that was a great time to connect with bands, build a fan base touring. I mean, it, we really had a good time, dude. We built it grassroots style, you know, and talk about physical media, dude. We sold well over 10,000 copies of that record. And I can almost guarantee you, we handed them that well over 90% of those were wow. hand to hand contact, you know, with a fan. So that was a very good foundational build for us. Oh, yeah. Forward. I mean, you, they bought a piece of media from the guy's voice on it. You know what I mean? Like, like it made that's what set up the living room tour. That's what set up all this stuff to like be able to even do that. Um, you know, we weren't in retail yet. You could only buy it through our online store. That's what I'm saying. We would have sold a few hundred of those long. Ten thousand is super impressive for when Bro, that came out. No record of ours has sold more than that one. That Jesus. One. We always felt like the label messed it up. <laughs> we spent more That's on the crazy. record and it sold less. And well, and just got told a lot more what to do. You build a wall squirrely, right? I mean, it's not perfect. Like there's right. Like, you could feel the tension of that dump in there. So like, um, there's something special. I'm far enough away from it now where I can, I can, I'm like, I get why people connected to it. You know what I'm saying? Well, and then there's a couple of the songs on there that you, you held on to and made a, either a different version of it or played a different version live, which seemed at least in my experience, at least one or two that I noticed that brought them back to that original record. They were able to find it through later versions of those same things. And like minutes or uh, yep. yeah, there's a few songs that we've we had kind of covered ourselves. The label believed in them. And I don't know, if, look, you know, looking back, some of those moves are like, what? But um, it's not uncommon, but it, right. yeah, it, for, for them to go back and find the original. And then we put out, I think the one that's on Spotify is the deluxe one of that. So there's a yep. ton of demos and like stuff even from when I was in high school and stuff like, you know, really wanted to connect with that time and why it's as weird as it is. Like, I mean, it, the title's too long. That was trendy right then, right? Yep. <laughs> uh, the the artwork is a little homemade. I mean, it, it's a. Uh, it's not bad though. You no, know, it's not bad, but it's it's heavy concept and. Yeah. On the deluxe version, he's gone and the ladder's up. The artwork's different. Like nice two sets of artwork. I had them. I had that team get back together, and you know, like ten years later, that was that was fun to do. Like when I think about records, I think about how he made it. You know, I don't think about what it felt like to hear it, right? I mean, right. when I hear records, I think about my hearing experience. I don't know what it was it's a like. Very different experience. Yeah, man, you're just taking me back to 2007 before it came out. Like, <laughs> life was very different then. You're right. It's you're crazy right. how long ago that was. I can't believe you have the copies of that, man. That's so cool. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I think this was the first one that really hit a lot of people, obviously, but I'm going to skip to the fact that this is the one that meant the most to me at the time that it came out. Although alligator, maybe nowadays, just because I don't know, you and I are around the same age ish yep. and alligator it, I, I don't know. It, it hit at that age where you and I were both going through a lot of the same things and feeling a lot of the same feelings and, um, you know, see, uh, the big thing is going to those two living room shows that you did here in uh, Missouri around that time and just being able to, to witness, witness Dude, your, uh, your feelings man. live. I was hurting. 
Yeah. That's cool that you got that tour. That was it. I mean, that was the end. We didn't play. Yeah. I, I was so glad I got to do two on that tour as well. My buddy Drew was at those shows. He's passed. There's a lot of memories connected to that tour. You know, I still keep up with all those dudes. Nobody on that tour was in a band in Kansas, really. Like, I mean, that that was a, a, a cool ride. That was another example of, like, that record sold, like, 3,000 copies, and I think we handed off 2,000 of them in person. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. Which is cool because it like they it was very intimate. Everything we yeah. did was very intimate. Like it was like a little baby shower in each city with with like our our record, you know. And it it was cool like to for people to care that much. And those were good days, man. I mean, that I, I, yeah, that's cool that you caught the Kansas City versus the uh, California experience. They're not neither one's better, but they're different, right? I mean, it, very very different. Even from here, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. You, you can tell here that there's a lot of friends and family that, you know, you've played with for years or, you know, just seen grow up in front of you and have to have the mature feelings that are behind Alligator displayed in front of those lifelong friends. It means something so different than a group of strangers in Victorville. <laughs> You're not wrong, dude. It, you can play a character in the California and, and then when it's right. people that we knew and went to college with and they know exactly who I'm talking about. And it, it's a, uh, it's cool. It's special, but they're also way more high maintenance. The closer you get to home, right? So many questions people have, you know, you don't text Coheed and Cambria, like, what time do you go on? But like, you right. know, when they're in their hometown, I guarantee you they get that text. And how annoying, like just come to the show. But <laughs> I'm just saying like uh, a play in the hometown is, is special in one way. And, and most of the time is not the preference for an artist. You know, there's something really special about having that barrier of somebody not knowing you and being just the art in their mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, that, that brought a question that I didn't warn you about that. I'm, I'm really curious if you, if you can remember this, what is the first time that you went, you know, say at least 500 miles. No, well, that's a, that's a long distance, say 300 miles away from home. And you felt a crowd sing one of your songs back to you. Yeah. I hope uh let's see muskogee is three or f three hours away in oklahoma sure that counts it's not far enough right dallas <laughs> maybe it would have been 2007 before the record came out yeah in minutes like that well it was it falls apart that was the first i don't know if you've heard that old song but like yep. um you know i think there was a couple places that surprised us uh, we, the, the message was always a sing along. We'd have people grab the mic and like pile on. So my band was on hard, hardcore was so big in 06, seven, yeah. like local scene was hardcore, like chicks, dudes, jocks, musicians, athletes, like dads, we were all into metal. Like, I mean, it, and then, so we, if we wanted to play in front of music people, then we joined those bills. We acted crazy to keep right. them interested. Do you remember our stage presence back then versus later? I mean, oh, as soon yeah. as we went to one Kings of Leon concert, we calmed down, dude. We were like, nope. <laughs> Let the music do the talking and just sit there and rock. How about you dress a little better and just, like, we chilled way out. Like, But when we were coming up, we were at hardcore shows at the bottom of a skate ramp, so it was like you had to bring it, like sweat right. equity, you know what I mean? And at, in Muskogee, we were on a lot of, good enough local hardcore bills that we had this crowd that would pile on the mic and it felt cool i mean that dude if i i mean I, we're starting to cover some hardcore in my cover band but to be honest with you if if i my dream band i mean i would want to be a front man and like knock loose or the chariot or something like that like that's by far my favorite platform that that's or, why on, or, on alligator when you when you put out mirror and uh i think you even you sent me the demo to that before it was recorded fully. Part? yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard that and I was like, this is what I have always wanted from Jerry. See? Yeah, Shane's dope, man. He, dude, all of his music's oh, Shane Oshner. If you guys don't know his bands, it's everything in slow motion, right? It's just new. It's one of them, yeah. I mean, Hands was what I met him in, it was a face yep. down band that he was in. And um, man, his bandmate Ian put out some music too. There, dude. It makes me it's cool how many what am I trying to say? I'm getting older. So a lot of my peers have hung it up. Right. Or they're huge. 
but there's a few guys that are still working and trying to make music and dude i love that because it's you know it's hard like it's 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 a sacrifice you know what i mean right. like it and so it's it's uh i'm about to drop 12 songs with glass age i mean one at a time but um you know talking about vinyl trying to get that order in now have you yeah. seen the deal Bandcamp does uh, they're, they're letting part? fans pre-order vinyl and then doing it's like you can do down to like 200 because the problem's been the minimum wow order for a while. right you had to do 500 or 1000 to even make it make sense and that and so they've worked out something you know there's limited factories that even do it one's in kansas you should take a tour i'd love to yeah hell yeah you should go do that like like make a reel out of it you know what i'm saying but like God, yeah i think that'd be really cool to see a day in the life and and uh cease and a record get made and i'd be thrilled um, yeah and we i'm sure you've watched that content but i think it'd be another thing to see it and profile some of those guys in the oh, workload. Yeah. I mean, Not to mention, I'm one of those weirdos. I, I can't imagine the smells just being a part of that process of how sensory overload you would be in there. The smells of the 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 rubber, like the vinyl, and then the yep. smells of the guys. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, I mean, they're they're they've got to be like, how is the investors of our time not seen the need there and popped up a few right. other factories like especially why? now that we i believe vinyl has outsold cds for the last like five five or six years at this point we clearly and it, want it. when we're exactly still a year cool. behind so how has jack white not started like a vinyl printing empire you did you see his video that he posted which no the the one uh, i was like three or four weeks ago he posted a, a video on youtube that's like 25 seconds long saying uh like warner bmg and a couple others uh th this has been the case for the last five years you need to open your own pressing plant and help release the tension across the world and called for them to do it way to go jack yeah and he nothing's happened aged a couple days ago yeah and i'm sure he's distracted great no, that's cool, man. Yeah, that'd be interesting if the labels started cranking out, you know, physical. So you said you got mostly movies. Do you talk movies or do you just talk like rare collector DVD? Like what physical media are you interested in film? Uh, pretty much everything. Um, I don't have any physical film, but I've, I've got everything from VHS to DVD to Blu-ray to top of the line 4K, brand new stuff. And a lot of it is like, old school stuff like this 70s movie called mad dog morgan from australia Whoa. getting upgraded and it comes like with a book and a poster and uh so i mean bundles packages type things yeah that's all the special features so yeah. interviews with the original cast and crew you know what the locations look like nowadays and everything and we get stuff from all over the world literally that's cool man yeah you just kind of feature that and yeah that that vip experience you know the the bundle the box the the, the the limited stuff is a a world i've never had a well i should take that back i was about to say i've never had a big enough fan base to do i think i've just never been organized enough to pull together <laughs> yeah like i've had a such a hard time with uh fulfillment with with uh with pulling all that off i can't imagine scaling it up like i mean it, it really kicks my butt dude like the but dude you wouldn't believe i mean it like the the drama there when you don't deliver you know what i'm saying i mean oh, I, yeah. they, they've spent money you got to deliver but like then i'm like i'm waiting on this guy and he's waiting on that guy and there's like this whole argument and it and then right. i just frazzle because i'm little i'm wanting to be a little singer jeremy and i have to be you know business manager jeremy. anyways the physical media side of that you know on on i wonder you know what people think on, on when, when they get screwed on shipping you know don't they just think it's the artists like they're the ones that slip oh yeah slope or something and it's not but like I don't, what's I, your perspective on that like uh, anything you've learned uh, over these years dealing with physical media like on who funny knows? enough we've uh we've had that come up just in the last couple months uh we had i've had a couple label guys on here from some of these movie labels and one of them a couple of years ago literally got death threats uh over not not just not getting something it was just slightly delayed in the mail to them and once the package is gone they can't do anything about it and you know a lot of these collectors like this wall behind me is is a common thing for people that love physical media they have thousands of movies at home 
And just because they don't have one the day they're expecting it, I mean, you have hundreds more to watch. Just yeah. go do something yeah. else. That's stress. Yeah. That, it's not food and prescriptions. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's a hobby. <laughs> That's a good perspective on it. I think the dude, I have hundreds of vinyl downstairs and I had, just haven't hooked up my, my rack or anything like that. Vinyl's tough because it takes up so much space. You got to have the right equipment to do it. And then not only that, but it can be the, the absolute smallest thing can ruin it in the moment. You know, the needle breaks or something got warped because you haven't touched it in two years and it just doesn't you sound start right. Wobbling. Yeah. We, yeah. uh, Funny story, too. I had a guy on the channel last week um, named Brad that is from a uh, movie company based out of Connecticut, but he lives in Florida. And he was talking about movie marathons that he does three or four times a year. And he said, yeah, uh, this guy that comes, uh, his name's Chris. He plays keys in this band, Under Oath. I was like, Chris Dudley. <laughs> he plays so, yeah. keys in this band. It's weird to even think about the, that is keys. <laughs> but he, Small he world. Under That is awesome, dude. Dang, what other kind of physical media you collect? Like, is it like, uh, like, is the goal rare stuff or just stuff that means something to you or just? My, uh, my big mantra on the channel is that every single film has been somebody's favorite film. And I view it, uh, like I've got a sign on the wall that says, uh, my, my, my handle is disc connected. So I try to connect through every film. single film has been somebody's favorite film. That's fun. All the, the, have you done the Enneagram? Uh, no. Or, or wait, yeah, I have. It's been a long time, but yeah. I'm a psych major. You know, I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, the personality test. The yep. eight in me is like, eh, let's challenge that. Like, uh, <laughs> there's some movie that's not somebody's favorite movie. My <laughs> argument has always been, at least the director at that time, loved it more than yeah. any other movie. But, but my favorite movie, are we going to play this combo? Like, what? Sure. I mean, my favorite movie is it's not technically correct i'm not saying it's the best movie i'm not nope. saying it's very different not words it's water world dude <laughs> like, nice Oscar. like that thing opened my brain into a place that like i didn't know film could go and i know it's like oh my god dude <laughs> Oh my god! This has a three disc limited edition with the theatrical cut, the TV cut, and the Ulysses cut. There is this much love poured into this movie, and a double sided poster. What? And a cup of <laughs> Kevin Costner's pits. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome! Ah, oh, did I don't know if you remember when you first saw that, but that was just like, you know, I I wasn't old enough to realize how commercially bankrupt that film went as the yep. set broke loose multiple times and like it didn't do well at all like but dude i already was in love with robin hood kevin costner yes and so when that <laughs> shit dropped i was just like oh my god like, i love robin hood prince of thieves uh, yes bro morgan freeman how right i mean some of that was backwards bro but like oh yeah those were movies, man. That's a movie that my parents talk about physical media. <laughs> they taped Robin Hood off a of TV and, uh, you know, to cut out the commercials, but they also yeah. got the witch. I didn't even know that was a character until I was <laughs> way older. Dude. I never even knew that. <laughs> At the very end, Azim busts through the door and knocks a witch across the room, and I've never even seen this character, dude. All right. That's what's your favorite movie? <laughs> oh, uh, my, my answer I always go to is usually Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but I don't know if that's the case anymore. Okay. I trying to discover through all these things. There's so much that is just hit hard. And there's one that uh, might, if, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it if, if you can get into some of the gory side of things. But uh, the movie Green Room, have you seen Green Room? Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Yes. And they run into the wrong skinhead gang in the back room of a bar. Yep. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Too real, bro. Too yeah. Real, like. and, and that's that's the thing. I'm sure you've seen a lot of it, but growing up through the the shows that I went to, I was looking at it going, "I've been in that green room." <laughs> well, where was it shot? Would Daddy been there? Like, chain reaction green room. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah, green room. Uh, just because of you know the the way I spent my my teens and twenties, it hit really home for me. That movie was fucked, dude. Yeah. Like. The I don't know what the language policy is in this podcast. Whatever I, you want I, it to be. I have Daniel Day-Lewis up here, but dude, I'd say There Will Be Blood was 
uh, one of my first like artistic, you know, uh, I mean, Paul Thomas Anderson, Johnny Greenwood on the soundtrack, like yeah. the supreme acting from him. Like it was oh, yeah. one of the first times I was like, oh, this is what a film should be. Like, I mean, it it really grabbed me. And then I think Place Beyond the Pines is another one that that's the kind of stories I want to tell. Yep. Like, like where nobody's a good guy or a bad guy. Everybody's layered. Oh, like, yeah. I hate, like I have a son now. Right? We got kids and, and, and the superhero thing is one thing. But real people aren't like that. Nobody, nobody is only one thing. Exactly. Like nobody's a good guy. Nobody's a bad guy. That's too easy. That's too safe. Like, and so, but that myth being sold to us early on, I think, sets up for a lot of betrayal. Like, right. you know better than that about yourself, but then you expect that from others. And I think, you know, it sets up for a lot of just confusion. And, and so my favorite stories are are, you know, broken characters now. I mean, it um, you know, single moms, single dads, people um, overcoming things, but then also blowing it. Like, I, I don't like the 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 uh, slick ending. You know, TV is oh, yeah. awesome right now, dude. It really is. It's so powerful. Like, all the stuff Judd Apatow's doing on HBO. Like, the I don't know if you watch. I We could talk TV all day, dude. But <laughs> how does that work with physical media? Do you collect seasons? Do you collect? Oh like, yeah, I've got a just to my left. I got a closet here, and uh, sadly, because of my amount of movies, it's overran in the closet. But uh, I've got two shelves in there full of just physical media TV from TV. Yeah. Is the Office one of your jams? I of hope. Of course. Oh yeah, I did. I've been to two Office trivia bar crawls, like thousands of people in costume. I've hosted one. <laughs> oh my god! I, I've been a, I've been a quiz, ma quiz master for a couple of years. I dressed up as Prison oh. Mike and had a my wife come and uh, a whole group of friends. Wow, there were a lot of prison mics at the event. That's an easy it's easy. Thing. It's a purple handkerchief. Yeah, yeah. A lot of her, like making it rain over her. Yeah. Over. And then I always my go to, and you've seen the photos. I do Meredith at, with the casual Friday. Yep, with the the purple dress snips. Perfect. They should sell that purple dress as a merch item. <laughs> the the Lego set came with everything, dude. It came with like the bagel. It came with like every like it was crazy. I don't have that one, and I'm desperate for it. I've got the friends one. That's, That's cool. It. Oh, yeah. a lot of details, right? Oh like, yeah. What super fan do they hire to curate these? Have you had that combo with anybody that works at Sony and and works to curate this this box experience that only a hundred nuts are gonna like? And you know what I'm saying? Like, I, uh, kind of, yeah. I, I've done some of that behind the scenes, and actually, one of the biggest things uh, that's a problem is what we were just talking about the the production limits. Um, yeah. I've got uh, I've got another company that I was looking to maybe invest in, and they. Do you know what a steel book is? Have you ever heard that term? How's it spelled? I don't uh, think so. Steel book? Yeah. Do you ever see the Tony Scott movie True Romance, written by Tarantino? Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette. It's. It, I really think I have, but I'd be bluffing if I don't remember it. So uh, these are steel books, and it's literally a metal movie case. And so you have art on the front and art on the back. Mm. When you open it up, there's you know more chances for art behind these things, but it's literally just a way to to share these. And there's a company that wanted to specialize in really beautiful steelbooks, like high concept art, really deep imagery, uh, a lot of like uh, Asian would work on a, on a book stand frame or something. Exactly. That's great. And yeah. I've, I've got, uh, I've, I'd show it, but it can't on here, but uh, I've got like 10 just hanging on the wall because they're so beautiful. And uh, the limits right now, they wanted to start printing, the, the manufacturing plants wanted to impose a 4,000 limit print run. Because they said every time we print at least a thousand, at least a thousand are going to be errors. So at that rate, you might as well just do a few. So our minimum is four thousand, and these things are not cheap to produce. They, yeah. They're full blown metal with plastic on the inside. Yeah, yeah. So it, it was so cost prohibitive that they lasted for one release so far, and wow. they're they're hoping to do more. But it's, I mean, some of these movies, you know, less than a thousand people in the world have ever seen it, let alone wanted to own it and hand a hundred dollars for the steel box or whatever yeah right. what's something like that run i mean it, 
Uh, for like oh, mainstream yeah. things that'll, you know, like the Batman movie, there's coming out with one that's like 35 bucks, but for something specialized like this and this box, it also came in, like I just showed you with Waterworld, a hardback cardboard box with a book and everything. This thing's like 60 bucks. Yeah. So much content, so much extra, yep. like it's very, and it, you've got to admit, I know you guys talk about this on here. I mean, I haven't watched it, but like the physical importance of, of touching your music, like we it's weird right we, it's audio but we listen with our eyes and our hands in a, in a way that 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 when marketers figure that out it's it's unbeatable dude like when you yeah. glue that whole experience together like i it's a it, it wasn't just for our parents like it it's not outdated sitting not with the heart and the lyrics big style in your lap as you experience the music is very like timeless experience you know what i'm saying like oh yeah I, i'm glad people we didn't miss that cue as a society like you know what i'm saying as digital as we've gone people still agree like it's that the real thing feels nice i mean audio quality wise i don't know we're entering a new space now with right. with surround have you have you have you fucked with any of the oh yeah it, it gets really interesting with music mixed in uh what's it called uh there's Dolby Atmos, there's Dolby Atmos. Surround. Yeah. Atmos. So Atmos is a new thing. Like when you go to your mastering guy, he gives you an iTunes master, a Spotify master. You've got your wave for the other digital outlets, and then you get an Atmos master. And then, dude, but th that's also the mix. Like right. it's what labels now have to pay to have delivered. And what these guys, like an average cost for a mix guy to upgrade his studio to Atmos, I mean, he's looking at, a couple hundred thousand dollars Jesus to upgrade his Christ. it's not making sense up here but it might eventually oh, but what if Atmos passes on through you know what if it's what if it's blu-ray and maybe blu-ray is still the thing but i mean what if it's not here you know what right. i'm saying like so to upgrade your studio to deliver on one medium that right. literally nobody's capable mostly how many what percentage of the society do you think can even engage at most like you know what i'm saying like it's less than two percent easily i mean your your iphone buds plus do it right and then yep. like one or two at home systems do it like what in the world like i mean right. it so the expectation to deliver it physically gets out in front of the demand it's confusing dude like i mean that shit changes the art like i don't think people have understood like people took vertical video on their phones long enough and frustrated horizontal long enough that we literally changed the <laughs> format bro yeah like i feel like people don't recognize like if society didn't participate they adjust like now we have a vertical form it's called stories it's called a whole thing but like they're putting up with your oh, yeah. filming so like i think i guess what my big big circle is like figuring out where people want to engage physically why isn't why isn't business meeting that? You know, right. burying into it. They're there, ready to spend money. You know what I mean? It's like, tough. Yeah, I mean, but why aren't the like Jack said? Why aren't the labels seeing the light there? Like, start your own vinyl printing company. Let's go. Like, put them out for twenty bucks. Like, people will pay that. Nobody wants a CD, but they want the antique art and vinyl piece for the audio nerds. I mean, it. I don't know. I think what they're literally just running with is the majority and it doesn't make yeah. any sense because I would much rather have 10% of a cut in something that has, you know, 5 million patrons rather than 0% of a cut of something that has a hundred million patrons. Yeah. doesn't make any sense. At, at least get well, something uh, for yourself. Everybody's looking at TikTok, right? Are you on TikTok? Yeah. Of course. I'm not. <laughs> But I'm only I, on there for my wife to send me funny videos. I don't do any of this on there. I know I'm shooting my, but you should be right. I know I'm yeah. shooting myself in the foot, not being there. That's where music consumers are. That's where 15 to 25 year olds live. I mean, it, I mean, it, the first question I get when I'm shopping the vice age stuff is what's your TikTok presence. It's not that everything. Is, that is appalling. It's not everything, but it's so much, dude right now they they just want to know you know these businesses are looking to pour gas on an already going fire they don't want to come create it and TikTok's right. with this energy starting man it's they found a way to to include music into visual 
that actually credits and connects and builds the artist. And Facebook has got to be kicking itself for not wrecking oh, yeah. that sooner. Like, holy crap, dude. They never inv- You go to a, a band's Facebook page and try to listen to a song. Let me know how long that takes. You will never hear anything. Facebook, right. well, not only that, it's the fact that they started limiting the the reach on people. You could post a message saying, we're going on tour, and you have you know 50,000 fans, and it only goes out to 3,512 of them. Why? It, dude, and even if they're engaging, they're making right. you pay to get them to like the page, pay to get them to see your posts. Like, they did what they wanted. You know, they wanted Facebook to be the internet. Yep. Like, it's, it's the neighborhood. So you got to hang. Yeah, I hang out with young kids and they're like, only boomers are on Facebook. I was like, <laughs> boomers pay my bills. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it, I want to reach the kids on TikTok, but eventually, dude, commerce happens in Facebook still. Like, I just, exactly. there's no way to connect money wise on TikTok. So it, they're combined. I mean, it's the physical media piece is, is confusing because it, it just don't know what people want. Like, we, we've printed a lot of, different types of merchandise over the years. Do you remember when we had mustaches? Oh, yeah. In fact, isn't those, that... Those all sold, dude. The mustache is on the back of this one. Oh, yeah, bro. <laughs> Rest in peace, old Brian. You knew Brian, right? Oh, yeah. yeah Brian dude. was great. We're coming up on a year of that. Dang. Part of the reason I won't go downstairs and hang out with my vinyl collection is because this drum kit's down there. That green one. The, the, well, if you look in the, don't open it, don't ruin it. But then we're all going somewhere. Art. One of the photos is the, the, top of his kick drum, that had the fruit of the spirit taped on it, and it's they're all still on there and, and stuff. It's cool, man. I've still got another open one upstairs. I'll go look at that one again. Yeah, but, they, and that's that's one of my biggest. You know, you talk about touching and and absorbing these. I, I, I relish some of the the moments that I had absorbing art in like. 2006 to 2010 was like the golden age of these random uh you know wake up on a tuesday morning go to you know circuit city and pick up the the new uh god audio adrenaline album yeah on a tuesday yep or uh one of the big ones for me like one of my favorite experiences people you know friends of ours uh the showbread album anorexia nervosa from god 2008 i think where literally you're playing the tracks with time codes in the liner notes and reading the story they wanted you to to go over like and they even say we expect you to do this by candlelight in a dark room yeah dude bro have you had them on Oh, not no. I haven't had Josh on. I haven't Let's talked to Josh go. in a long time. Let's go, dude. Those Josh and Patrick are film and horror nerds first. Oh yeah, second. Like, Dead by Dawn was one of their first giant band. songs. We did the music video for Like It or Not, um, with those guys on a five hundred dollar budget, and like hundred dollars of that was rent in a hotel room for the one scene. Like the those guys are crazy. <laughs> man like and at their house hanging with them watching movies living in their world like bro those dudes are raw rock and roll dude like for <laughs> real some of us are posing but those dudes are rock and roll dude. they uh they stayed at my house in california one time yeah. oh, and no. uh ricky the the drummer at the time grabbed the guitarist uh pillow and pulled down his shorts and bare ass farted all over it and went Here's some pink guy for later, and went like this to a friend of mine to keep it a secret. Just funny as hell, guys. Uh, no, the I, bear ass part was their old thing. They would yep. bear <laughs> their face. Yep. <laughs> on the bath, dude. I, dude, their their culture. They went on tour with us for the Ad Astra tour. Yep. They, them in the wedding opened that tour and the, a leg of it out west. It was from any lakes and swimming dolphins. Dude, look at Joey go, bro. Joey's like, huge. Yeah, bro love it man i oh yeah are you kidding i mean that same year do you know the very next year i hope this doesn't feel man i feel like i'm being that guy but <laughs> the, the the very next tour was with 21 pilots they opened for us for a week Jeez. and they in it the dude i mean they're like the, one of the biggest bands in the world i mean it literally uh, yeah and they didn't one of the house of heroes guys play with them for a little while uh, josh josh uh you know, well, Josh is in house is 20. Josh is 21 pies drummer. 
And then right. Colin stepped back from House of Heroes for a second, and Josh played drums for a while for House of Heroes. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, so that's how we knew Josh. Yep. Then we came back through Ohio with Waverly, and 21 Pies played some dates. But they're like... Waverly. I've on, heard that name in forever. Yeah, and Highland, a tooth and nail band. Like, I mean... I still keep up with some of these guys, but to look at where 21 Pilots is now, I mean, they come to my town and sell out the arena. I mean, oh, yeah. It's wild. They, they play like two nights here and sell out both times. Yeah. It's yeah. insanity. Incredible fans. Like, we, I mean, the last few times they've come, it's been cool. We've gone and we've hung and we've had the experience and, and seen them. And But they, they're on a whole different, I mean, I can't even fathom, dude, what that lifestyle and, and scale of business is like. You know what I'm saying? Talk about physical media. That's a band who could make whatever they want. It would sell out. So it'd be so fun to get creative with it. You know what I and mean? Now they've got vinyl and freaking Walmart. Dude, they do. Walmart, Target, the video game store. Yep. You know, buyback Entertainment. Has, you know, new vinyl. Yeah, I don't. Urban Outfitters has had it for a while, right? But now. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. What about was, tapes? How do you feel about cassettes? I, I've got a few. I my last deck it just completely ate dust a few years ago, so I have not found anything reliable since then. But I've got. I mean, I'm, not only do I have music tapes, I've got uh, a couple audio books that were put out for like uh, actual horror authors reading their books. Um, I've got. Uh, I still have VHS that they're still putting out nowadays. Um, yeah, it, it's it's wild. The the steps they're going for some of these collectors is crazy. Dude, it's extensive. It's like a subculture I'm not even aware of, really. I mean, it... hmm. speaking of showbread, I uh, I don't think I ever shared the story. This is so freaking random, but actually, kind of relates to you because uh, that one time I went to that comedy show and you were up there for uh, I think it was somebody else's uh, bachelor party, right? Or was it yours? Yeah, no, it was uh, no, it was mine, and we were seeing the taxi Ben uh, Bailey guy. Yeah, 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 dude. Yes, that was me. Yep. So, so we showed up there and found you, but that was not the only time I had this random happenstance. I, uh, when we first moved here, I got into selling life insurance for a little while just cause I was desperate. Yep. And, uh, I, uh, used to be a plumber's apprentice in California. So I went to this, uh, plumber's company down here uh, just cause I knew the lingo. And I was like, Hey, uh, you guys are interested in life insurance. And the owner was like, yeah, give me your spiel. And I did. And he was like, you know, I, I don't really care about that, but we need a salesman. You want to come uh, hang with us for a day and see if you want the job here. Like, sure, why not? So I rode with him for like five hours, went and bid a few jobs, literally just spent the entire day with him. We're riding home. He goes, so I want to get to know you outside of work too. What else are you into? And I was like, well, I've always been huge in the music scene. He goes, oh yeah, my, my son's in a band. Uh, wh what kind of stuff you like? And I was like, naming all these things. He goes, have you ever heard of the band Showbread? I was like, yeah. You, uh, my, my son is Landon. He, he plays guitar in Showbread. And I, I moved to Missouri and went and basically almost got hired by Landon's dad. I was like, I have Showbread tattooed on my leg. <laughs> That's amazing. He still lives there. He designs a yep. bunch of big Chiefs designs. Oh, yeah. Follow him? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's pretty big up here. Dude. <laughs> Bass player for the Chariot. Oh, he was the KC Wolf for a while. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Oh man, oh, dude, he still lives in the area. Just trying to think of other like hardcore legends from our hood childhood that uh, you know, are in have some sort of KC connect. Yeah, it's the uh, you you played up here right after we moved here in uh the record bar. They moved and they're like this big venue now. Um, but the second show we saw you at here was the Riot Room. Yeah. Oh Did yeah. Did you hear what happened to the Riot Room? Yeah. Did I what? Did you hear what happened to the Riot Room? Hopefully nothing. What? It's gone. Uh, Watch that. <laughs> somebody drove into it, and the whole place got on fire and burned down. Oh no! I thought you meant like it got gentrified, like the neighborhood, or like. No, nope. dude, yeah. I gotta text Neil. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you know why? Yeah, I bet they won big time. Like I bet those dudes can 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 be feeling good about that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. I think that's and it's not like that place was in great shape. <laughs> no, I like the outdoor indoor combo and I like the bar. Huh. Riot Room. Dang. Yeah, I, I would like to get back up to KC. What's the spots right now? I know there's a Rhino in North KC. It's like all ages kind of alcohol free environment. The outdoor of the Riot Room, as, as late as okay. last year, they were still doing stuff. Okay. I saw, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Amigo the Devil. 
you listen to him he is he does like some of the like the 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 murder punk type of stuff that they've been calling that lately uh like the old andrew jackson jihad type stuff almost that's cool uh, yeah um saw them last year oh and actually this is gonna be wild i saw zayo play that outdoor stage just that's a couple cool. years ago yeah that's cool. yeah furnace fest dude that's that's the, have you thought about going down there I have. Uh, when Showbread announced they were playing, I was totally into it. And then the pandemic took it that away. <laughs> but even this year, the lineup, it looks crazy. It's massive. Yeah. Festival game is wild. Dang. I'm trying. I never loved festivals. That's the hard part. Why? The balance of all the schedules? and that That's the biggest thing. But also, it's just, it, it gets expensive. And it, it's, it, it feels like the most unsafe option to me. Yeah. You're not wrong. I, uh, I, I went to uh, Cornerstone, tried to do a California version for one or two years. Oh, yeah. What year? What years were those? I remember that. We played Cornerstone 07 and 08. I want to say 2006. Okay. Because um, they, they there was a festival in California called Rock the Park in 2005, headlined by P.O.D., right before um, they released that song with uh, Katy Perry. They got went super huge. Um, so yeah, th they did that, and then the next year was Cornerstone, California, and Under Oath headlined it. And uh, I think the whole weekend they had twenty thousand people show up, which is pretty great for the first year of a festival. And just at the Under Oath show, there was ten thousand people, wow. and it was just too huge. It was too crazy, like in the pit, and too well. The, the 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 setup wasn't great. It, it was a very narrow setup that they had for the stage. So if you were in the back, you could not see anything. And the, they had one or two screens, but they were fairly small. I don't think they expected even half the turnout they got. Dang, that's interesting, right? When a festival will fail because it's doing too well. And the infrastructure, yeah. like others fail because nobody shows up. And they had, they had yeah. only two stages, but they were literally like 150 feet apart. So they would alternate every like 25 minutes. And somebody would just turn around and basically be at the front of both stages. That's a warp tour, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like that's that stuff's coming back. You saw how quick that so what sold out and or uh, not oh, yeah. so, uh uh when we were young sold out. And yeah. Nostalgia's huge, dude. It is. We're getting abused by it right now. I mean, <laughs> that's like what we knew. Like I wish some new stories were coming, but I mean I mean, I don't know how you feel about all that, all the reboot stuff, all the remake, all the you know the it depends i, I mean the, the originals are still there they can't take that away from you but there are certain things that can kind of yeah yeah there's stuff to tell i mean I, yeah i i think seeing something you immediately like okay that's just this right and it, it feels i uh i have started producing a couple podcasts yeah, right. for some people and it gets that gets to be a nightmare when you're talking like four different guests and a host you're what do you mean producing? Like you're getting out in front of it or you're editing? I'm post, editing like a post and doing a lot of the credits and stuff like that. Yeah. That's tough to probably learning some stuff along the way though. Helping those yeah. guys. For sure. What else do you guys still doing my day job? <laughs> on this, uh, right. What is the day job? Uh, I still, I still work for the government full time. I've yeah. Can't talk advanced. No, I can. I, I work in immigration and I'm, uh, not to like be secretive about it, but I've gotten semi high up in my young age. Oh, I mean, you probably and it's, <laughs> it is a lot more stressful than it should be. <laughs> mm. We're working for an agency that is essentially a, a built in political football is very difficult. Just wow. Interesting. It, it, because it pits who's in control. Yeah, exactly. And it, like I've seen policies changed with an email in an afternoon that are across the well, entire country. Dude, and 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 who didn't experience that in COVID times? But some jobs right. live there. Like you're yep. saying, you live in that that limbo. Like yep. this, the policy today, I may be getting on to you for the opposite tomorrow. Like of course, that's hard man. I mean, it. That's tough. Somebody's got to do it, but it's hard. Dang. Yeah, so I do that. I do the podcast stuff. Uh, I've, I've got two live shows that I do every week. I do pre-recorded videos. What do you go live with? Like review a movie or review a um, product? Every, like thing, box or? every Tuesday night, uh, me and a friend, we just we pick a theme for the night. Like we usually do uh, 
uh, favorite and least favorite movies from a single director or um, five movies that are like coming of age films that we want you to watch something like that and we'll talk about it and then we'll just shoot the shit for another hour after that yeah. and then uh, Thursday nights I go over all of the announcements for the week like this this these fancy ones uh, there's stuff literally announced every yeah. single day so. so people follow just to even find out about stuff and yeah that's cool man yeah Dude, I appreciate you having me on. I mean, we don't have to wrap it up. I was, I was just saying, I appreciate you having me on for the combo. I wasn't even sure what we were getting into, but, um, you know, the physical media piece has been a big part of my world. <laughs> well, and I was going to ask, have you even put out a full length on vinyl yet? No, uh, other than the, what's coming soon. Yeah, Glass Age will be on vinyl. Uh, the um, only vinyl I've ever done is a, a, a the EP with AK, right? A single seven inch with. Uh, it has marching around me on one side and you, me, and the radio on the other side. Yep. And a, a really cool dude. Um, I'll think of his name. I should have pulled that out. I still have that. I Pennsylvania. Think. He fronted the money for that and made him, you know, and and wow. uh, ordered the vinyl and they got that shipped to his house. And then he screen printed the, the sleeves and did all the work. And um, he took the risk on that. And I, he definitely lost. I mean, it we didn't sell that all of them i mean it but it was cool like it was he had a, a few boutique releases like that like a guy that was passionate about physical collector media and he won on a lot of his stuff that sold out and he took risks right. other stuff that he was passionate about and one time i went and played his hometown and um jason is his name it came to me and i opened for the power team <laughs> you remember that <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> Hang on. I should correct myself. I opened and closed because I played for the altar call at the, the end of, uh, you know, power team. Like, <laughs> things, you realize you're not strong. The Lord's strong. And you need saved. And if I you can't know, rip a telephone book, gemstones. come give your heart to Jesus. Righteous gemstones nails that power team <laughs> humor. And uh, it's like Adam from workaholics is the character leading it. Yeah. So, you know. Oh my God! Dude. Anyway. We just had someone from uh, some small town in Kansas share a flyer on one of our Facebook groups that they're still doing a version of that, and it's not called the Power Team; it's something different. But good God, yeah, we'll see. The yeah the the physical media piece to me is confusing. How people want to spend their money, dude? Like, what what if people like they won't come to a ten dollar show but they're like pounce on a 55 dollar item that's clearly overpriced like right me as a consumer wants to to feel it live and then maybe make an impulsive decision at the table <laughs> i don't do any online shopping so it's hard for me to enter that that headspace of like people that want to consume art like that from a distance and what what's important over there like constantly trying to think of little little items to sell you know that are non-music too and what what yeah. matters and, uh would love to play off the glass age theme and the the theme you know it's sort of a near future kind of narrative that it, i would love to do like a graphic novel that's actually what i brought up a bunch just like a periodical that comes out quarterly that comes to your house that's nice. got like a focus on a band member maybe you know it's like a 12 page magazine with really like mostly really nice images good you know interview type stuff and like and then a piece of our story with the album that kind of enhance like the booklet with the cd for yeah. the but it comes in in layers along with the singles that are rolling out nice but you know Print's not that expensive. Um, I think finding the demand, finding the person to put that content together and make it look good. And uh, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot of details. And it, but it is. I don't know what, what do you think people love? What do you think? Like, from I, your honestly, graphic novels do pretty damn well right now. Graphic novels, but from a musician, like, that's different, right? I mean, it, I mean, Coheed has done it. Uh, yeah. There's, there's a few bands that have done pretty well with them. That's cool. I mean, uh, look, it's a, a an odd one to maybe to compare, but look at the Aquabats. They've done stuff like that for literally yeah. like 25 years. Year. It's kind of their thing, right? It's almost yeah. like a house. So the artist in me, you know, doesn't want to lunge into an area where I'm not 
that's not my thing and do it wrong. You know what I mean? Right. I, I want to team up with a guy who that's his thing. He's digging the record. He gets the, he does the cover art and does the, the thing, but it's hard to, to dial in all those combos up in front and time it all right. Get everybody paid. Everybody gets paid first. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? One one of the uh, interesting ideas might be to go to a local convention. Um, like we have Planet Comic Con here, and there's literally Creators Row. And you, you can have 50 of the creators there. And if you spend $25 for a day ticket, but get your work into 50 people's hands that might be interested in it, I mean, that's kind of worth 25 bucks. I agree, dude. I mean, I've never even gone to a Comic Con or event like that. I've seen footage, but I think that would be interesting. And you name it for any type of thing that you're into. There's cons for it. Like right, I'm, creators. I'm going back to California for the first time next month to go to a horror con. <laughs> Where's that at? Uh, down in Pasadena. Okay. Why that one? Um, because uh, through this community, I've met a few friends. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. meet up with a few people down there. I uh, got somebody flying in from Washington or Oregon, rather. That'll meet up down there, and um, got a comedian friend that lives down right in. Yeah like right next to the con gonna hang out with him he uh he also a musician just put out his first single okay. with his band yeah that's just making connections like we always have i can't believe you haven't back been back to cali since then i technically we went for a couple days uh when my wife was pregnant for a baby shower and came right back but i didn't i didn't do anything it was just to get in and get out as quick as possible Dig any holes in the desert or like find any boats <laughs> No, not that time. Dang. Where is that dude? Is he down in Texas? That buddy that helped us do that? Uh well, I I think we had two out there that day, but the other one that uh is in the credits of the video, he's here now. Is he? He's in yeah. Texas. Maybe I knew that. Maybe I knew that. He uh he came out here oh probably about a year after Alligator came out. Okay. Do you know did you ever follow Radio U? <laughs> yes. Do you remember Obadiah? Yeah, of course. You were on the show tons of times. Yeah, so he doesn't work there anymore, but dude, that dude would be a great guest. Yep. He collects a ton of media and is really passionate about like DVD copies of every his library is huge. Nice. And he's a comic nerd and like He's so good in this. Anyways, I'm a connector, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, people too. mistake me for a leader, but I really don't want that. I, I'm more like, oh, you'd be great with this, and over here, let me know what happens. Like, yep. Uh, but anyways, the Obadiah would be a really fun combo, like to, to go down some rabbit holes on some of the because it seems so fan culture oriented. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's very cool. There, there are certain, uh, you know, some random band that won't even be huge will have this dedicated group of like 5,000 people that can fund them for years, literally. Bro, I booked, I, that's my goal. I mean, I have booked Guar finally. Do you know that band? Oh, Guar. Yes, of course. Yeah. Like they're going to desecrate the venue that I booked them in. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, just one of those bands who's gone all out on their their theme and only delivers to the fans nobody always else. and it oh it's so impressive dude like it continues to work like they the die are, hard i don't know if anybody is even original in that lineup like the concept is so pure like yeah. it's crazy <laughs> can i be real with you i just realized that well each time we've had a fuck up in the audio i've thought it's because we're disconnected but you're <laughs> Your username <laughs> is disconnected. Yep. Pretty creative, dude. As a guy who uh, tried to make a living out of confusing uh, wordplay in the band name, <laughs> would not recommend what. <laughs> Do you know how many times I showed up and it just said Kansas or just yep. said, you know, now my new cover band, A Band in Kansas? Like, it's so fun to mess with folks up front but then in the back end you pay for it dude yeah and the I fact that i can't get the same usernames across all social media that's always a problem oh anytime we're inventing the new bands we always do that first like go spotify and google it yeah. like see if you can grab the handle and then you go dude i have so many <laughs> instagram handles that I <laughs> <laughs> well i know you said you had an hour and a half so i'll let you uh yeah, dude, let you go this mess into anything 
like usable. I don't know if that was helpful at all. Anything else you wanted to talk about or ask about or make sure you got? Uh, not really. I mean, it's really just a, a hangout time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Get back into get back in the habit of talking to somebody that I've known for quite a long time. And yeah, dude, we go back. There's so many random stories that come up on here all the time, and most people are like, "I've never even heard of half the names you're mentioning." <laughs> and the, like uh, last week when the guy brought up Under Oath, I was like, "See, they, they exist." When I bring up these names, they exist. <laughs> yeah, they're real. No, dude, I got all the references you made today, and I mean, you're right though that man, some of the characters that we were dealing with then are still pretty. They're they're crushing. You, I'm telling you, go catch up with Isaac, dude. Go chase that dude's new stuff to down like isaac deed's stuff is amazing dude i mean he was great gonna, then yeah yeah i agree like philosophically was already in the zone bro yep. but was was still coming up as you know commercially and now he's right where he wants to be he has i think three feature films done and in the can just waiting to find wow. their release you know, I mean, he's he's cranking it, dude. And so really hoping he makes a video for Glass Age or does something like I'm supposed to go down there to Atlanta and get a few days in with him. But, dude, he'd be a great guest, too. Oh, my God. Absolutely. Let me know, man. I I know Tim would come on here and talk about this stuff. I mean, it, you let me know, dude. I'd Tim's love to. Person, have you seen him? Like, Not lately? in a long time, no. Dude, he's way up over half a million subscribers. He's best friends with Elon Musk. Like... <laughs> Full access to everything. He's dude, that dude is literally going to the men. You know what I mean? Like he's wild, bro. So what about bro, uh what about Crusoe? Is Crusoe still gonna be doing anything? Yeah, Crusoe. So Dustin, who I made Crusoe with, is is like absolutely crushing it, man. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if you follow him, but his project Zade Wolf. And I hope we write some new Crusoe music, but I'm I'm not gonna do it on my own. Like he brought the value to that, like the pop production uh, commercial value to that. That yeah. was me singing and writing lyrics, you know, over top of kind of like the more of like a hip hop style production, right? Like a collab yeah. with a singer and, and a pop thing, you know, like, but uh, which was cool for me, it put me in a new territory. I think it's affected, you know, even the stuff I'm trying to make now. But um, yeah, Dustin's crushing it on his own. And it worked really well. And there's so many times that, uh, God, there's been at least two or three times where I've been listening or watching something. All of a sudden, I go, wait a minute, I think that's Jeremy's voice in the background. Yeah. And the, the last one that hit me hard was "Love" on Netflix. Yeah, dude, we had that's, two songs in there. Yep. Yeah, that's it was featured weird. really nice. That's cool, man. I haven't. I tried to watch that show, and I didn't get far enough into it to see the song. The, the the way those syncs work come about is pretty cool, man. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I made more money doing sync stuff than I ever did traveling and yeah. handing out physical media. Like, there's a real budget over there uh, that has to get spent somewhere. So why not me? Like, I, I used to be afraid of that. Now I'm like, no, not, <laughs> you know. So I, some clues. <laughs> I gave in a little bit on what I want to listen to and make. Right. And, and went and tried to you know and so it's only been man my time with dustin's elevated dude i mean he's he's a really great songwriter and producer and um he's he's got that rapper money now dude that dude is crushing it so i'm just trying to wait in line and figure out when we can do another <laughs> song. but i love him and if we don't get to do another batch then that's okay but there's definitely talk of doing another crusoe record nice a different batch of guys that i have and kind of brought the band to life and then COVID hit. Yeah. We we're gonna start playing that stuff out live and whatever. But Glass Age is the focus right now for sure. And it it's feels good. Time. And uh I, I'm gonna include all the links in the description for the YouTube video. And uh I do put this out as a podcast too, so it'll be all be in there. And um one of the things that uh is big is th that vinyl for the first time. Yeah. I know though oddly, I know that's very important to you, and, and you can tell that it's something that you are immensely proud of and i'm glad you're finally able to do it and uh I, i'm i'm happy for you vincent dude the oh yeah payment just to get it moving like you know we didn't have a ton of pre-orders so I, it's not like i'm just like sweet easy choice like it's a risk it always yep. is i mean it's something i've wanted to do but um 
Yeah, folks. I was hoping it went gangbusters. And the moment it went up, I you know I don't even think you had posted about it. I, yeah. I think something happened, and I I had pre-ordered like the moment it went live. <laughs> yeah, you were one of the first easily, but that thing didn't really go. I mean, it, you yeah. know, there's a lot of. I mean, that's a different combo, crowdfunding, whatever. Yeah. But the record is going to come out. Like all that stuff is hard, man. We're still independent. I'm hoping we can partner up with some distro and get some of that going. But you're you're telling me even the big boys are. It's tough out there. It is. Especially for vinyl. Yeah, it's so popular. Maybe that's why the tapes are popping. You, <laughs> that's true. That Man, there's an artist from uh, Minneapolis called Dury. D-U-R-R-Y. I think you... Uh, wait, are those... Is that the guy and the girl that took off on TikTok? Yeah. They yeah. are freaking rad. I lost They're freaking you. red is all I got. Oh, there you are. Yep. That's all I said. Uh, yeah, yeah the, gonna, they I took off their, on TikTok. <laughs> a friend of mine sent me the link to their TikTok, like the day they posted their first track. And I okay. loved it because it sounds like that exact type of stuff that is just out of your garage. This is the type of person that you like. Go see at the record bar. They're perfect. Austin's been in a lot of bands and has been around, you know, um, with you know, with a band in Kansas, with I mean, that dude has been trying for a while, and to see something take off for him with his sister <laughs> that he was just messing with, you know, artistically was just like trying to put a song idea out. To see it, what's happening is awesome, dude. Yeah, I think he'd be a fun guy to talk to though because they've been doing some really interesting limited merch runs. Yep. And it's been moving, dude. And that is like the magic word right now is limited. If you can get something that there's only 250 of them, they'll sell out immediately. Not only that it's 250 of them, but they only open the store for a few hours. Jeez. Like, you know what I mean? They're like, Krrr. yep. People love that crap, you know, but you got oh, yeah. to get it right when it. I can't do that tomorrow with my band. That's true. So finding that gas is like interesting, dude. And having stuff in place to jump, you know, or jump into that energy, create that energy, deliver a product. I mean, dude, they're doing a really good job, yeah. like hustling. And I think they'll explode straight up with the, I mean, the TikTok thing is so weird. You basically yeah. have to start a TikTok, convulse for like 90 posts, just like, <laughs> with like a song. Yep. And finally, people mess with your stuff enough to where they like. You can calm down a little bit and be yourself. Like it, but it's wild, right? I mean, you yeah. literally have to freak out. Um, it's not much different though than like an opening slot on a tour, right? I mean, you're you're gonna like very true lay out. Like, I mean, you're overdoing it because you're like, please notice, you know. And then and then once you got the platform, you can chill out. And man, that band specifically has been a very one. Like for me to a very interesting story to follow, like with the, how they're handling the old school merch, the old school music, but the new school marketing plan, dude. Like, yeah, very cool. Yeah. I agree. There's a the band, I can't think of the name of them that opened for you at the record bar that show in KC. Do you remember their name? I, they've got, I think they were from Kentucky. And I, the sad thing is, that I don't think it was Seabird. Seabird. No, it was not Seabird. Uh, uh, they they have a song called like Rocky Mountain Strawberry or something like that. Oh, the Hold the Bray, bro. That's, that's them. Yeah. They freaking rule. Yes, dude. They still rule, bro. Yep. They're great. They're still. I've been following now. them ever since that night. Oh my god, Clayton's my freaking shit, dude. I would marry that guy tomorrow. He, you know what's funny? Those long haired weirdos. They also like houses, like real estate. Now every musician's like, <laughs> I'm also a real estate agent. Like, yep. <laughs> I mean, that's where the the hot market is with the, that type of personality but anyways man that's cool they played that show yep i don't remember that show not because i was like lit. i'm just saying i don't specifically remember that record bar show i i don't think it was a tour i think it was a one-off mm. and there was another opener too i think the record but... bar is not huge it's just upstairs. it wasn't they have moved now 
Oh, they moved again. So it's third since okay. Or second now. But you the the show I saw it in, I saw you in was the the original oh, very cool. small. Yeah. Yeah. And then but the new one just is is like a skinny hall with like an upstairs skinny. I've been in there. It's not too big, but it's bigger. It's bigger. Yeah. It's very much like subterranean in Chicago, but um uh, I haven't seen much on their schedule. I don't know. Now getting to the calendar booking world, man, like two companies run the whole country. It's getting pretty weird. Yeah. Like, once we get into some of this other stuff, like all the conspiracies that people are talking about with labels and distribution, it's also going on at music venues. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's very um, gangster. I had to try to explain to my wife a couple of, what were, I think we were talking about Coheed and Cambria, about the I don't remember the the specific term when you're um, scheduling shows, but the the venue rights where they can't be within a certain distance for a certain amount of time. The radius clause, yeah, yeah, that's it's crazy the depths that you have to go through for all of that. Yeah, because it, it kills your marketing if they're going to play Lawrence a month later on a different festival. Or, right, there's all kinds of rules, man, with mileage, with timing, with. Um, you know, you get a band that's just a support slot and their headlining dates coming through later. Like, you know, so when can they announce kind of thing? You let them share from the stage. You don't let them post. I mean, that language comes up a lot, man. It There's a lot of competition with that. I mean, it, yeah, it matters. Dude, so many tours rushing out this summer and fall. I don't know if you're going. Oh, yeah. I mean, not, not many, not many this year, but hopefully yeah. soon. I, uh, I, I'm very tapped out this year and I, I just had my, my second surgery on my foot last summer. So I'm still not, not a hundred percent. I may never be, but oh, I, come I'm, on. I'm still here and supporting. I mean, I went to Coheed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's ADA seating. You'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> I, I sat through a third of the Coheed set. Yeah. It's okay. We're getting old absolutely i still sit through a third of my band set just on the drum record, <laughs> breathing heavily no dude this new cover band you'll have to come see it sometime because we do like four hour sets dude absolutely i've 50. been dying to it's mayhem bro like the cover thing is so weird it's kind of like what you deal with but the the, the currency is nostalgia like yeah. so we whip people into this frenzy that has nothing to do with me or <laughs> yep I'm just there, right? And so, it, and 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 they're so far gone into nostalgia that they're like, ah, like I wrote it. You know what I'm saying? We perform it. This like, is Stone Temple Pilots, right? We don't just stand there and kind of casually cover it. We play it like we wrote it that afternoon, right. or trying to pitch it. And so people are like, ah, like like they're like hot topic kids again. You know, like it's so fun to watch a. 30 something lose it to a song dude. like it it's a little too much power i think but no it's fun you have to come check that out sometime we'll bring it up there i, I need to get rid of my kids for the night and then i'll go down yep yep vacation happily agreed well again it's uh got us 9 30 so i i'd like yeah, to see good. your night back have a good night um i'll uh all right. Thank you for watching that conversation with Jeremy Spring. I thoroughly hope you enjoyed it. As we are nearing the end of April and going into May, I want to remind you that we are getting closer and closer to a thousand subs on the channel. So if you have not, please subscribe below. I am trying to get to a thousand before I go to Monster Palooza next month. And uh, also, it is getting near the end of April, which means it is the perfect time to sign up for the Patreon because I do a giveaway right around the 21st 22nd of the month if you sign up at the vip level and the cutoff for that is on the 20th so if you want in and you want your name to be eligible for a boutique physical media giveaway that i do every single month sign up now and i will get you put in on the list uh in the meantime please give the video a like and share if it's something that uh you know somebody might enjoy and as i always say from one collector to all of you have a good night